Hello, friends. So lately I've been playing with the idea of sound magic as just another game to practice and play. Um, and specifically, I've, tr I've been trying to formulate an idea around the concept of a sound sigil. Now, you may be aware, there's, there's sigil is a term used um, when you take an intention, you follow a certain order of operations, you make a little piece of art, and then you like launch it to the universe. Um, I view this as simply like a hypercharged actualization intention, and that's that's sort of mainstream these days. There's different documentaries about it in films. Um, that's my perception of this all. So so at the base level, a sigil, it's an art project of making a symbol. And the way it works is you write a sentence or a statement um, where you're referring to things in, in the now, um, which is what they say about actualization. Then you go into it, you remove all the vowels, you remove all the repeating consonants, and then you're left with a few, um, a few letters. And, and then you take those letters and you make them into just like an art symbol thing. And then the idea is, once you're ready, you just try to get into the zone, meditative state, and then you launch it. So I'm gonna actually do that right now. Um, but anyway, so yeah, like I said, I, I view, I view uh, sigils as um, an art project which hypercharges an actualization through placement into the abstract. And that is what some people feel is the power of this. Um, the idea is once you start working on the art project and you're making your symbol, you're supposed to be sort of removed from that original intention. And, and the idea is when you launch it, you're just thinking of the art. And people that have a perception that you know the universe is this uh, ether matrix RAM <laughs> that we can tap into feel that maybe like this is like hacking the matrix a little bit when you, when you do this level of abstraction, you know. But I was thinking about, I mean, you know, it's language, the written and spoken word themselves are an abstraction from our internal thoughts and feelings. So that's already an abstraction. And then we're this is just like another layer of it, though. So I'm going to do it. So I, I kind of already wrote on this a little bit, but let's say I just have like a silly intention that I, that I say in the now called and I, and I said, I find drinking water, because I'm thirsty. I find drinking water. And what you do is, you go in there, get the vials out of there, figure out what the repeating consonants are. So, so in this example, that's F-N-D-R-K-G-W-T. So that's what you're left with. And then what you do is you take that and you just make like a doesn't you don't have to be a good artist or anything. I mean, what I usually do is I'll think like, OK, the D is kind of like the R and the G. They have that loop thing. And I'll just think about how different letters will combine, you know. Um, and what I ended up making was this little guy, whatever this is. Like a little alien figure or something. So at this point in the order of operations, you know, we're, we're done with our art project. We're ready to launch it. So the idea there is, is di people recommend different things, but um, just getting in the zone. I, I think of it as like the flow state. And so, so I'll launch this. So. I'm thinking of the symbol, trying not to think, trying not to think of the intention. Okay, so it's launched. <laughs> um, this is just play to me. Um, so then what one of the things that the proponents of this say is after you're done with this, you know, like it's done. You don't need it. So you can just discard it, throw it away, burn it in a wood burning stove or a bonfire, or whatever. So I'm gonna throw it, I'm gonna recycle it. So anyway, so then the the, t the task at hand for me was to figure out how do I convert this into sound? and audio and music. And I went through a few different iterations of it, but the one that I've arrived at, which I like the most, is I had the idea of taking the, taking the letters that are written 
converting them to their numeric value in the alphabet. So, okay, I'll, I'll have to sp explain a little bit more. So you do that, then you add, add all of those together to get like an, uh, the numerology number, right? And then you just follow the sort of numerology um, order of operation, which, is, which I will show you. So anyway, so I did that with these guys. And what I got was, when you, when you add up the numeric values of all of these, all of these alphabet numbers, you get uh, 103. And so the idea I came up with is, that number you treat as the tempo, beats per minute, and then the n numerology uh, order of operations. In numerology, when, when you add something up, like there's books about how to, to, to calculate your nu numerology for your birthday, and I think I'm like a 25-7 or something. And so what you do is you add the month and the day and all that, um, and then you'll get a number, which was 25, and then you add those two, so it's a 25-7. That's one way that people do numerology. And I'm not into numerology. I've made maybe three or four of these sigils my whole life, but I'm just playing, you know, with something cool, in my opinion. So anyway, yeah, so we got 103 beats per minute, and this comes up to a four in numerology. So what I what I did was I'm I'm treating similar to my dice game. I'm treating um, each uh, value as part of a scale, at which, which starts at C. So for me, this would be D sharp, E flat. So then we're at this point where we've defined the beats per minute and we have a um, tonality. Now another way to do this, a variation would be to maybe combine combine different sets of this, you know, like maybe I could I could combine FNDR, figure out that value, and then I could combine the rest, figure out that value. And you could have a couple keys to play with. Um, and I guess a tempo change, I haven't really thought about it, but um, maybe you could keep the same bass tempo for the whole thing or something. So the idea is to just, if anyone's interested in this, just play with it, you know. Um, I, I'm not, you know, I have no say in what you do with this. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that's that. And then um, now I'm going to, so the idea here with the launching I've had is that it has to be an improvised piece you have to get in the zone as much as you can, you know, like flow, channeling, zoning out, vibing. And I don't think it should be too long. Um, and then I've also thought, you know, this could be a private thing. It could be a performance with other people. You could post it online. Um, at one point, this idea was very elaborate and had um, all these rules to, like, making sure everyone deletes it from the from their social media and all their friends like have the have the engineer delete it from his hard drive you know and it's the idea of destroying this the the symbols kind of led to that but it was very convoluted and and uh I like this version better so if you want it if you want to leave it online for a certain time and delete it and just have it be gone like the traditional sigil that's probably a good idea um Anyway, so yeah, so I have 103 beats per minute and in an E flat. Oh. And I have I have a little uh, I have a guitar toolkit, I think. I have a 103 BPM uh, beat ready. I'll be able to hear it a little bit.
There we go. That was my launching. And I admit, I, I wasn't really in the zone. So if this is very, if this is real, like, power of the matrix, um, obviously I'm recording this right now. <laughs> I just explained it, so, um, yeah. And I, I was gonna, I was also thinking that if you don't, if you do wanna post, if anyone had this idea to do for the, on their own, they could just post a piece of it, you know, like if you played for 30 minutes, you can just post a little piece of it you like or whatever, but anyway. So thanks. Hope you enjoy my description of the Sonic Sigil. <laughs>